West Virginia has an endless expanse of nature and is famously known for being a wild and wonderful place to explore. Its vast rolling mountains span across the entire length of the state and hiding deep within them is a plethora of wildlife. Today we are exploring an incredibly healthy ecosystem near Elkins in a secret location that we are not allowed to reveal as it is heavily protected for conservation purposes. We have special permissions to explore this location and are working alongside field herpetologist Tim Brust. Tim specializes in surveying protected wilderness areas where he safely catches, records, and releases reptiles and amphibians. Just got through, Tim. What we have here is a northern water snake. Our mission is going to be anything but easy as the goal is to locate one of the rarest amphibians in the great state of West Virginia, a giant salamander that is known as the Hellbender. Wow, there's the river. And in there is where we will be searching for Hellbenders. It's absolutely beautiful. And right now we're scouting around for a place to build a base camp. And basically all this river that you see in the background here is fair game for hellbenders. So in these ripples are great spots. There are a lot of huge flat rocks. So I'll be in the water with a dive mask on, feeling around for giant salamanders. This is gonna be awesome. There is no good word to describe what it takes to find and catch a hellbender other than difficult. The fast flowing water is incredibly cold, so much so that we're forced to wear dive suits. Dive masks will allow us to see underwater as we literally have to scan the river basin and look into the dark crevices of rocks with the slim hope of seeing a pair of big buggy eyes looking right back at us. I am about to stick my face into the water. Hold on, I gotta go. Oh, yeah, that's real cold. That is real cold. Okay, there we go. All right, guys, wish me luck. Searching for a hellbender is an incredibly delicate process, and our intention was to disturb the environment as little as possible. This means gently feeling up and under rocks as opposed to flipping them. The last thing we wanted to do was alter a potential hellbender home as they are very territorial and will often stay in one area for a considerable amount of time. This is unbelievably freezing to have your complete body submerged in this frigid water. I can't even feel my fingers right now. Wow, okay, I don't know how Tim's doing this. Nothing yet, but it is freezing. Our epic hellbender hunt went on for hours. At this point, I was completely frozen and ready to call it a day. Yet Tim absolutely refused to give up, and his persistence finally paid off. We got one? Hellbender looking right at me in the face. We got a hellbender. Okay, so we have a hellbender, 100%, right here underneath this rock. Tim's gonna use a gentle maneuver to coax it out, and I'm gonna try to scoop it up in the net. Is it big? Oh, it yeah. appears to be. No. Is it big? Tim mm -hmm. says it's big. Mm -hmm. It's a big one. All right, the uh, hellbender is right near the entrance of this hole we have a really good chance at actually catching it. It went right underneath 
his legs. There it is. It is an absolute giant. Yes. Wow. That was the hardest helmet or catch I've ever had. Wow. wow. Oh, man. That was an amazing maneuver. <laughs> he just grabbed it up my head. It shot out in between his legs and he netted it. Wow. That was incredible. Uh, Look at the size of that giant helmet. That's a big one. That's a big one? That's a good one, yeah. Wow. Man, what a weird, Gorgeous. what a weird creature. Most bizarre salamander I have ever seen. Okay, we need to find ourselves a good controlled spot in decent light and get the salamander up close for the cameras. Right. You ready? Yeah, man. There. Yes, we got one. All right, guys. Well, it was a long, cold day in the river, but we finally did it. All right, Tim, bring in the hellbender. Oh, there it is. One of the most elusive creatures that you can possibly come across in the United States and the largest salamander species that we have here in North America. Look at that. That is a hellbender. Oh, very, very slippery, very difficult to hold on to. You notice how flattened the shape of this amphibian's body is. That's what allows them to easily slide underneath the crevices in between rocks and then work their bodies against the current as they're walking on the basin of a river looking for food. Look at the head, completely flat. Have you ever seen anything like that before? Some people call it the Allegheny alligator. Some people call it the mud dog, the mud devil. My personal favorite though is snot otter. And it feels as if it is covered in snot. And you can see this brownish colored body, very long and slender, makes it look like an otter. Wow. But in fact, we do know this is an amphibian and not a mammal. It does feel snotty. Right? That's why you can see it's so hard for me to hold on to it. One thing that I can feel that you guys can't quite see is that on the tips of their toes, they have these little grippy pads. Tim, see if you can kind of fold up a foot there show that to the camera. See the little kind of orange fingertips there? Are those slimy or are those grippy? Those are very grippy. That helps these amphibians grab onto the slimy rocks on the basin of the river. Look at that coloration though, right? We kind of tilt it down. Can you see that? Brown with slightly orange patterning allows it to stay perfectly camouflaged on the basin of the river. And you can you see the eyes up front there? kind of zoom in on those eyes. See how tiny they are? They have very poor eyesight. They can sense light, but they actually have all these little light receptors all over their bodies, and they can also sense vibrations in the water. They use that ability to sense vibrations to help them hunt for their food. And then look at the tail. The tail is like a rudder. Can you see that? And that's how they're capable of making quick bursts of movement underwater if they need to. Like when it first came out from underneath the rock, it shot out and Tim magically somehow managed to scoop it up in the net. Now they're primarily nocturnal. That's when they come out and do their hunting. And 90% of this amphibian's diet is made up of crayfish. They will eat small fish. They will take other little invertebrates. And believe it or not, a large one like this will even eat other hellbenders. They're very, very territorial. And oftentimes a smaller hellbender may lose its life to a larger one like this if it wanders in to the wrong neighborhood. Oh, I am just in such awe of this creature right now. It is unbelievably incredible. Like, I never thought I would ever see a salamander this big. Now, it is the largest species of salamander in North America and the third largest species of salamander in the world, third only to the giant Chinese and Japanese salamander. And look at that little face. How adorable is this creature? It's kind of staying pretty calm at the moment. I'm gonna dip it back down into the water. I need to make sure that this amphibian stays hydrated at all times. Here, Mark, come over top and let me show you these lateral skin flaps. This is one of the most interesting things about these amphibians. Can you see this? Sure can. See those flaps? These flaps actually help them oxygenate and they absorb all their oxygen through the water. Well, hello. Hi there. What's your name? Should we name you? Herbie? Herbie the Hellbender? I think that's a yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, he gave me a little squeak and blew some bubbles. Well, it's interesting because they breathe through their skin and scientists actually aren't sure if they use their lungs to breathe or just for buoyancy underwater. And right there, 
I would definitely say that it kind of looked like it came up for air. At least it exerted some air from its lungs, probably so that it could get down to the bottom of this tub of water. Now, one thing that I do want to do very quickly here is actually get the length of this hellbender. We're gonna do a little biometric research here. Try to get completely stretched out here. Tip of the snout to tip of the tail. I think with the bend, it's 20. That looks like a 20 inch hellbender right there. Wow, 20 inches in length. So Coyote, how old is this amphibian? Well, nobody really knows for sure how long they can live, but some scientists think they can live as long as 70 years. Wow. I would guess that this one, based on its size, is probably somewhere between 25 and 30 years of age. So about as old as we are. Yeah, pretty much. This is an old creature, and they're very susceptible to pollution. This is what we call an indicator species, and the fact that we found one here in this river is a really good sign that the water system is, in fact, healthy. Now, their larvae are the ones that are most susceptible to pollution, but because they absorb so much of the environment through their skin, like all amphibians, if it's a polluted area, there's not a good chance that they're gonna survive. Well, it was one very long and very frigid day searching the rivers of West Virginia, but we finally came across the elusive hellbender. I'm Coyote Peterson. Be brave. Stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. All right, let's get the salamander back into the water. Over the past century, hellbender populations have greatly declined. And while the species is not officially listed as being endangered or even threatened, it is protected across its range. And strong conservation efforts are helping to preserve the species. Organizations like West Liberty University, which has the largest hellbender conservation facility in West Virginia, are currently head-starting hellbenders for release into the wild helping to ensure a hopeful future for these giant amphibians. All right, there he goes, back up underneath his rock. Yes, all right, well, Herbie is back in the wild. High fives, Tim, amazing job. That was one wild adventure. All right, guys, let's get out of this river and warm up. I know that I will never forget my time spent in that freezing cold river working alongside Tim, and the moment he successfully netted that incredible creature. We got him! And as it disappeared back into its dark, watery lair, I felt a sense of overwhelming gratitude for being given the chance to get up close with the one and only Hellbender. If you thought the Hellbender was bizarre looking, make sure to go back and check out the episode where I was inked by the brown sea hair. Gross. And don't forget, subscribe so you can join me and the crew on this season of Breaking Trail. Wow, I never knew the slugs had eyes before.